Radiation protection Licensed dentists play an important role in maintaining radiation exposures of patients and staff as low as reasonably achievable. Currently, in radiology, the acronym ALADA is also used, which means as low as diagnostically acceptable. Greater numbers of intraoral radiographs are being requested and wide range of other dental radiographic examination like panoramic and cephalometric are being performed on a routine basis with the addition of advanced imaging modalities which is CBCT. Individuals who operate dental x-ray equipment must have basic knowledge of inherent health risk associated with radiation and must have demonstrated familiarity with basic rules of radiation safety. There were two scientists who gave a major contribution in radiation protection. Dr. Edmund Kells, who is also known as an inventor, discovered that his patient cannot hold the film in the oral cavity without movement for a long period of time. Therefore, he constructed a film holder made from thin aluminum plate and gutta percha that allowed patient to bite into occlusion, thereby holding the film in place during swallowing. He took radiograph of his assistant and placed him against the side of thick fixer board positioned between the tube and his face. He unknowingly prevented patient's face from receiving an erythematous dose of radiation by using thick board as a filter. Kells became one of the early martyrs who fell victim to the harmful effect of radiation injuries. Kells endured 10 to 12 years of increasing discomfort, progressing to excruciating pain and 35 operations including several amputations. Finally, at the age of 72 years, he shot himself and ended his life on May 7, 1928. William Herbert Rollins, also known as a forgotten man in dentistry, in January 1898, while exposing his hand to highly evacuated gas tube with high voltage, he suffered with severe burns. He suggested radio-opaque leaded glasses enclosing X-ray tube in a leaded housing, irradiating only the area of interest and covering all the adjacent areas with radio-opaque material. Rollins was the first to urge the use of filters to remove dangerous low-energy en X-ray from the beam in the year 1903, which went unnoticed till a radiotherapist George Fallard, in 1906, recognized it. The father of radiation protection is Rolf Maximilian Seiwert. There are three basic factors of protection against exposure to ionizing radiation. Time, distance and shielding. Time. Reduction of time of exposure can directly reduce radiation exposure and reduce radiation dose. Distance. By doubling distance between patient's body and the source of radiation, it will cut the radiation exposure by a factor of 4. Shielding Lead, Lead or lead equivalent shielding for X-rays and gamma rays is an effective way to reduce radiation exposure. Various types of shielding like lead aprons, mobile lead shields, lead glasses and lead barriers can be used. Protection in general We are exposed to radiation every day in our lives. The sources of radiation exposure are divided into two, background radiation and artificial radiation. Background radiation are further divided into external sources and internal sources. External sources are further divided into radon and its progeny, which may become attached to dust particles which when inhaled and deposited on bronchial epithelium in respiratory tract. It constitutes 73% of background exposure. Cosmic radiation includes energetic subatomic particles, photons of extraterrestrial origin, interactions of primary cosmic radiation with atoms and molecules of Earth's atmosphere. It constitutes 11% of background exposure. Terrestrial radiation it includes radioactive nucleides in soil. It constitutes 7% of background exposure. Next type is internal sources. 
which are radiation from radionuclides that are taken up from external environment by inhalation and ingestion. It constitutes 67% of background exposure. The second type is artificial radiation which emerged as a result of technological advances by man. It is further divided into medical and consumer products. Medical is further divided into X-ray diagnosis and nuclear medicine. Consumer products is further divided into occupational and nuclear fuel cycle fallout. Exposure groups. Dose limits are governed by laws and regulation to cover three distinct exposure groups. Occupational, which limits 20 millisievert per year for five years. Medical, which includes patients who benefit from radiation exposure for diagnosis or treatment. Non-intentional, which include public who do not benefit from exposure. Dosimetry. Dosimetry is the determination of the quantity of radiation exposure or dose. Objective of X-ray dosimetry is the measurement of energy absorbed in any material with particular references on biological tissue. Radiation dosimetry deals with measurement of the absorbed dose or dose rate resulting from the interaction of ionizing radiation with matter and particularly in different tissues of body. Exposure is a measure of radiation quantity, the capacity of radiation to ionize air. SI unit is karma. Absorbed dose is the measure of the energy absorbed by any type of ionizing radiation per unit mass of any type of matter. Equivalent dose is used to compare the biologic effects of di different types of radiation on a tissue or organ. Radioactivity is the measurement that describes the decay rate of a sample of radioactive material. Sources of radiation. These are primary B, scattered radiation or secondary radiation and leakage radiation. Primary beam is defined as radiation originating from the focal spot. Scattered or secondary radiation is the radiation originating from the irradiated tissue of the patient. Leakage or stray radiation is the radiation from X-ray tube housing. Means of protection. Protection from radiation is required for three main groups, for operator, for patient, and for the environment. Protection for the operator. The operator must be protected against primary beam, leakage radiation, and secondary radiation. While protecting against primary beam, effort must be made so that the operator can leave the room or take a suitable position behind a barrier or wall during exposure. Dental operatory should be designed and constructed to meet the minimum shielding requirements. Position distant rule states that the operator should stand at least 6 feet away from source of radiation or the operator should be at an angle of 90 degree to 135 degree with respect to the direction of central ray. The operator should stand behind a barrier made of suitable material. If there is no shield, the operator should use a lead apron. The film should never be held by operator. There should be no use of fluorescent mirrors in oral cavity at the time of exposure. Operator should avoid holding X-ray tube head of machine. While protecting against leakage radiation, neither tube housing nor the cone should be handheld during exposure. Machine should be periodically checked for leakage. While protecting against secondary radiation, high speed films must be used. Short plastic cone should be replaced with an open ended lead lined cone. Adequate infiltration of primary beam should be done. Collimator should be used to reduce diameter of beam. Film badge should be used. Protection for patient. Before the patient is exposed to the radiation, there are two criteria which should be taken care of. Patient selection and conduct of examination. In patient selection, 
there is high yield of referral criteria which is clinical or historical findings that identify patients for whom a high probability exists that a radiographic examination will provide information affecting treatment and prognosis conduct of examination selection of image receptor includes use of high speed films and screen films use of intensifying screens focal spot film distance says that as x rays are less divergent at a longer distance there is decrease in volume of patient exposed tissue volume collimation of beam collimation helps to control size and shape of x ray beam allowing only useful beam to emerge there are three types of collimators diaphragm rectangular and tubular filtration preferentially absorbs low energy photons which are undesirable as they add, add to patient's skin dose but do not have enough energy to penetrate tissue and bring about image formation higher kvp is used to keep incident skin doses acceptable positioning indicating device help to minimize volume of tissue irradiated in intraoral radiography timer requires continuous pressure on switch during exposure cycle in order to continue operation of x-ray machine use of protective barrier includes leaded aprons gonadal shields and thyroid shields film holding devices offer protection to patient protection for environment following are the guidelines which should be considered for protection of environment primary beam should never be directed at anyone other than patient walls are made of 3 inches of concrete 3 inches into 16 inches of steel or 1 mm of lead windows are necessary for operator to see patient as he is irradiated glass lead should be used doors of radiology room should work as secondary barriers they should have lead incorporated in them practitioner should be informed of new information on radiation safety issue quality assurance may be defined as any planned activity to ensure that dental office will produce high quality image with minimum exposure conclusion dental radiographic examination are not without risk X-ray radiation has the potential to damage tissue through either indirect or direct effect of radiation. The biologic effects are cumulative and every effort must be taken to keep radiation exposures as low as reasonably achievable. A variety of radiation safety and protection measures can be employed to reduce exposure to dental patients and minimize occupational exposure.